morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're in a good place and welcome to this edition of Show Group on the Sofa. Today, I'm thrilled to be interviewing my good friend, Joseph, from the Man uh, Malta Association of Credit Management today. Um, and I'm going to be asking him to talk about things, all things to do with Maltese credit management, but also the World Credit Congress. So welcome, Joseph, to Share Group on the Sofa. Thank you, Claire. Uh, thank you for the listeners. And hello, Ross. Have you ever been to Malta? <laughs> You're always welcome. I will be your taxi driver. There you go. <laughs> Actually, that was my parents' favorite place in the world. So there you go. Um, so yes, beautiful, beautiful part of the world. And... Um, having a loud voice uh, because of you and your colleagues on the topic of credit, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into uh, today. So um, what you do for Maltese credit management on the world stage is amazing. Amazing. Um, now, you're the director general. Um, and for the, the MACM, um, what sort of services do you provide to your members as the credit association for the country? Yes, uh, Claire, we established MACM, as we call it, uh, Malta Association of Credit Management. Uh, we set it up officially in June 2001. Oh, uh, so that was 22 years ago. Um, uh, and the, um, um, the objectives of MACM have always been, and they, are, they still are, uh, threefold. Number one, we do a lot of lobbying. Uh, we lobby for uh, we lobby with the with various stakeholders in order to uh, make sure that we have uh, a fair playing field when it comes to credit management. Um, and fortunately, or uh, fortunately enough, um, the, our lobbying side was uh, very successful throughout these twenty two years. So objective number one is lobbying. Objective number two is education, but I don't want to sound paternalistic. Uh, we promote good credit management practices uh, with the local business community, with the Maltese business community. So we publish books, uh, leaflets, uh, we organize seminars, conferences. Um, as you know, you were once you were one of our uh, guest speakers. Yes. Uh, we organize lectures. Um, so we are always promoting good credit management practices to the business community. And our third objective, uh, Claire, is we provide information, we provide data to our members. We call them members. And our membership are all corporate. Um, we provide data for them so that they will be able to analyze the credit worthiness of their prospective customers and their existing customers alike. We have we also have a system whereby they can flag, our members can flag their customer base and uh, if any news, if MACM receives any news um, uh, about one of those flagged customers, we prompt them, we prompt our members with an email so that they will monitor their customers on a daily basis. Besides that, we also provide various tools for our members. Uh, for example, we provide templates, uh, various templates, um, uh, so that they will be able to um, use the proper wording when it comes to credit application form, for example, when it comes to sending letters to their customers. So we are always providing tools and uh, information besides lobbying and uh, and education so that in in my uh, to my mind MACM is a one stop shop uh, when it comes to credit management clear so yeah. if you are selling on credit in Malta you should become member of MACM <laughs> and you will have a comprehensive service uh, from MACM. I, I got you. And of course, Malta is a, a busy and flourishing um, part of the world and a beautiful part of the world. But it is an island. 
So in terms of your um do, does your um services do they do they go to for um credit professionals to trade outside of Malta or is it just around the Maltese business community? How does that work? Well, yes, in fact, I personally do lecture uh, credit credit professionals, not only in Malta, but also worldwide. Uh, I lectured um, in various parts of the world, in various parts of the world, um, not only in Europe, but also uh, in, in, in Mexico, for example, in South Africa, um, in the US, uh, Malaysia, um, I think I have lectured all over all over the world. Uh, yeah. So it's not only Malta. Malta is a very small island, as you said. Uh, but of course, we do a lot of lecturing here in Malta, although it is all, it is a very small island. Uh, yes. it's, yeah. So you've got this sort of flourishing credit community within Malta itself, and then supporting. Um, you know, multi Maltese business going out from Malta across the world, which is uh, fantastic because you must you must need to export and um and, and sell services in all kinds of destinations, as indeed we all do. I know that, but what is the population of Malta? I, I don't I don't know that figure. So, well, statistically, it's around half a million. Right. Um, uh, a little bit more than half a million. But uh, Malta, as you know, <laughs> you were here. It's a very, very, very archipelago, very small archipelago of violence, Malta and Gozo. And it is uh, the most overpopulated country in the European Union. Really, really. And very busy and, and active, um, I say, in, in credit, which I think is great, you know, because you host a conference in Malta. Um, it's a great place to come for a conference. Better than London. <laughs> One day I will invite you again, Claire. <laughs> I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Just as a participant. Um, now, obviously, credit the credit process across the world is, is similar. Uh, obviously, there are local nuances to um, how it operates in in different uh, in, in different environments, but. Um, in terms of suppliers and creditors, um, you know, how do you guide your community on onboarding customers to just reduce the risk and not get into hot water, particularly in these, you know, challenging times? How, how do you guide your members to onboard new customers and new prospects? Yeah, clear. Um, uh, as you said, credit is very similar all over the world. But Malta is very, very, very particular because the fact that we are small, we know each other very well, if not related. Oh. And therefore, yeah, and therefore it is more important than anywhere else to uh, abide to some good credit management practices. And what I always say, <clears throat> not only in Malta, but everywhere, is never grant credit without getting a signed credit application form specifying clearly terms and conditions. That is number one. Yeah. Never sell on credit on a handshake. So uh, the first thing I always say to our members is uh, get a credit application form with the terms and conditions signed, and that will form the basis of your credit agreement. So that's step number one. Following that, <clears throat> you have to analyze the credit worthiness of your prospective customer. <laughs> especially if, if uh, especially now, following COVID, we all know that some industries, unfortunately, were, were, were hard hit uh, more than any other industries. So we have to uh, do this analysis, we have to do this credit worthiness analysis more than ever before. And then MACM helps our members, as I told you already, we provide data, we provide information so that together with the, the information that you collected from your credit application form, uh, you can analyze quite uh, clearly the credit worthiness of your 
prospective prospective customers. For example, MACM provides data relating to any history of dishonest checks, for example, any history of overdue accounts with other suppliers, any history of court cases, um, I don't know, court, court warrants, for example. So you have a comprehensive uh, scenario, comprehensive report on each and every entity registered in Malta. So I always recommend, one, to get a credit application form, two, uh, to use data provided by MACM to analyze the credit worthiness of, uh, of your prospective customer. Uh, it is also important to continue monitoring your customer because as we have already referred to, uh, since COVID, we have seen a number of companies in specific uh, industries that once we used to call them lucrative, once we used to, to call them uh, very good companies. And unfortunately enough, uh, today um, they are struggling if not went bust already. So we have to be extremely careful more than ever, Claire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. Was your um, tourism trade, restaurant catering, was that, I mean, that must have been, If did you, did you go into lockdown as an island for several Yes, for, uh, yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. And remember that in Malta, uh, Tourism is one of our main pillars. Yes. Uh, so during lockdown, uh, unfortunately, um, these these uh, companies struggled. Uh, although they, uh, although the government uh, gave them some incentives, but yes, they struggled. Um, uh, and a lesson learned, Claire, and probably uh, your listeners will will. Uh, uh, will like this. Um, although the government gave them incentives, uh, cash flow has become extremely important. From what I can note is that those companies who had strong cash flow, they survived. Yeah. Those companies that didn't have a very strong cash flow, they struggled and some of them went bust. Yeah. Profit is important, but cash flow is extremely critical. It is. It is. It absolutely is. I, I think there's a saying, something like turnover is vanity, but cash flow is sanity. Um, Correct. And it's it's true for for all types of business. I don't care what, what type of business you're in or where you are in the world. You've, you've got to have right. to be able to pay your people and, and be able to keep the lights on. In, yeah. in terms of, and, and I know that you will, and, and for, from our part as well, you know, for business owners that have um, survived COVID and come out the other side, well done, because we're all in the same boat globally, um, which was unusual for the human race to be stuck in that same kind of world altogether. Um, and, um, you know, we we certainly here, um, and I'm sure you do in Malta as well, we feel for anyone that didn't come through it the way they wanted to. It, it was a very, very unwelcome part of business life. Um, now, uh, this data that the NACM is, is, is creating, um, is that on a platform? I mean, is it a, is it a done Bag Bradstreet type system? What's driving that data? I'd love to know. Uh, yeah, we have we have um, a platform whereby our members are provided with a username and a password. Yeah. Uh, they enter into this platform. They search for uh, that particular client, um, uh, and they get a comprehensive report on that particular client. Yes. Right. And our data is updated daily. Um, that is extremely important for us. Uh, we need to update. We have to, not we need, we have to update the data every single day. Claire. Yeah, yeah. And and that is run by the MACM or you outsource that to a third party? Or? No, we don't outsource this. We do it in-house. It is ours. Um, uh, my colleagues at MACM Secretariat 
do all this work uh, together with me, obviously, and uh, we provide this service to, to our members, ourselves. So no, we don't, uh, we don't outsource. However, uh, if any of our members um, uh, who may want to get a report on a foreign company, uh, we have uh, our partners who are international um, uh, international company, yeah. uh, Info Group from Cyprus, and they provide us with data and reports, KYC reports, AML reports, due diligence reports, international credit scoring reports on companies. Uh, so yes, if a Maltese or a local would want uh, a report or a KYC report or a due diligence report, on a foreign uh, entity, uh, we go to our partners and our par partners provide that report for the local market. Right. Uh, but anything local, we do it ourselves. You do it yourself. That's fantastic. So um, what, other, what, what other positive steps can um, supply creditors do to, to keep credit risk to a minimum? I mean, you're a seasoned credit professional what what do you when you're lecturing what are you telling your your delegates and students to you know to keep things tight and and uh, not open up to risk what's your uh, clear we are uh, we are living in 2023 yeah and uh, one thing which uh, i note is that all departments within an organization have improved, uh, and that's good. However, sometimes, well, very often, um, uh, we, we are still doing, at, in the credit function, we are still doing what we used to do 20, 30, 40 years ago, unfortunately. Okay. What I would suggest to everyone who is coming from the field of credit management is that Keep in mind that the credit function is a credit function. Sorry, that the credit function is a people's function. Long are those days for those people working in the field of credit management who work behind the desk crunching numbers. I always encourage everyone working in the field of credit management to go out, if need be, with your salespeople. You meet your customers. Oh, yes. Why? Because it is extremely important that the customer knows you, that the customer, uh, you build a report with the customer, you build good uh, customer relationship with that customer. So when you phone him up, he will be able immediately he will be able to put a voice uh, to a face. Yes. And that is extremely important. Remember that the, we call it Pareto, Pareto rule. 80% of the business generated are being generated by only 20% of your customer base. Yeah. So what I would suggest, at least, at least, go and visit those 20% of your customers who are generating 80% of your total business. I think that's very good advice. Try to visit these people, try to get to know them, uh, make friends with them. Uh, in Malta, we have the habit, which is good, I think. Um, uh, we, are, we are very uh, close to each other. We love yeah. people. Uh, during Christmas time, for example, uh, go and visit uh, your customers. Um, uh, it's the right time. It's the proper time in some industries, which is uh, good to meet up yeah. uh, with with these with these uh, customers. So yes, know your customer, and not only your customer, but try to know the customers of your customer. Yeah. Make sure that you know the customers of your customer, because if something happens to the customers of your customer, your customer will be affected. And obviously you will be affected. So it is important not only to know your customer, but also to know the customer. customer. 
build good customer relationship is extremely important when uh, doing business and when selling on credit, clearly. Mm. And I think that's something that automation, digital advancements um, can kind of uh, reduce that um, reduce that function and that people getting to, I mean, even, you know, getting together on Zoom, I mean, uh, you know, uh, my community is fairly spread apart, but um, just, you know, catching up today on Zoom and having this interview, but I do that with customers as well. I like to get them on a Zoom call and, and everybody appreciates it for 15 minutes just to say hello. But I think if you can visit them in person and um, have a cup of coffee with them and, you know, shake their hand, I, I, I think that's irreplaceable really as a business tool. Yeah, clear. Um, uh, you referred to automation. Uh, <laughs> Although I can understand why they automate, yeah, um, which is good. I don't have any issue with automation. However, you have to be careful what you are automating. You can automate the day to day, uh, the day to day um, uh, uh, running of the business, uh, the one plus one equals two sort of thing. Yeah, but never replace the human element with automation, because. Uh, when it comes to credit management, credit management, as I told you, it's a people's function. You need to go and visit these people. You need, uh, they still want uh, that physical contact, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. They still want to meet up. So don't replace uh, the human element with machines. Use machines wisely. Yeah. They are important. Yeah, no, because... I if you use machines wisely, you will be more effective and efficient. Yeah. But having said that, the human element should always be present. Always. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I, and I just think, and in this day and age, you can be inventive about how to make that connection if you can't do it. Um, oh, if only we lived, all lived in Malta and it would be so easy. I get it. I get a moped and just scoot round. You know, I just think it's just such a great place. Yeah, we, we are at a, at an advantage because here in Malta, okay, we have a lot of traffic. They always tell us. I know we have a lot of traffic, but um, in thirty four, let's say forty five minutes time, I literally I can cross country and uh, I can go and visit my customer. Yeah, uh, and that is important. However. If we're talking about a larger community, a larger uh, country, we can still invest in our time and go and visit the top customers yes. because yes. the top customers are generating a lot of business. Yep. And we need to get uh, in touch with them, to keep in, in, in touch with them and uh, maintain, literally maintain good customer relationship with these, with these people. Yeah, I completely agree with you. So you've got your customer, you've got a good relationship with them. Um, how are you going to organize and how do you encourage credit professionals to organize their accounts receivable function um, to protect that sound cash flow we were talking about um, while satisfying the needs of, of credit customers? How does that look to you in your world? Uh, clear. Um, uh, if I had to pick up randomly two or three balance sheets of a company, I would immediately, immediately note that AR is, uh, if not the largest asset, one of the largest liquid assets, uh, in, definitely a liquid, uh, the largest yeah. liquid asset, but one of the largest assets of that particular company. And therefore, we should invest to protect that liquid asset. However, unfortunately, um, uh, the resources are very limited for everyone. Yeah. Therefore, we should use our limited resources. We should focus our limited resources to manage our a to manage our AR more efficiently and effectively. And in my opinion, the best way how to manage our AR in an efficient and effective manner 
is to categorize our customers according to their paying behavior. Okay. Yeah. We usually categorize our customers using geographical, uh, using geography, using uh, according to, 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 to the products that we are selling. Fine. I, I, I don't have an issue with that. But for each and every region or for each and every product, if we are categorizing our customers by region or by product, do another subcategory according to their paying behavior. In fact, I always say that we can categorize our customers in four different categories, clear. We have category number one, which are those customers who pay religiously on time. Mm -hmm. Those are the best customers. Yeah. Never go to sleep if you lose one of them yeah. without knowing why that customer left you. Yeah. So that's category number one. Category number two, I would put those customers who always pay, but they have to be reminded. We need to remind them because they are so focused on selling, so focused on producing their, their products, for example, and they don't have enough time to sit down and send you the money. Yeah. But as soon as I give them a call, I receive the, I receive, uh, the money. Yeah. Therefore, category two are those customers um, uh, whom I have to phone before getting their, uh, my money from them. So there again, these are extremely good customers. Don't go to sleep if you lose one of those customers without knowing the reason why you lost that customer. Category three, are those customers, whether it is um, uh, true or not, but they perceive that they have some sort of dispute with you. Mm -hmm. If they perceive that they have a dispute with you, if they are not agreeing with the invoice, if they are not agreeing with the product, if they are not, whatever it is, the dispute, Unless you sort it out, they will never pay you. Yeah. So in that case, as a credit profession, professional, and that is why the credit professional should know the other departments well within their organizations, yeah. leave your desk, go to your uh, sales team or go to your distribution or warehouse or whatever to sort that issue out. If you don't sort that issue out, they will never pay you. So this is category three. Yeah. And they are very good customers, clear as well. So there again, never go to sleep if you lose one of those customers without knowing why they left you. Yeah. Category four are those customers I don't call them customers, I call them debtors. I call them fraudsters. They are only there to fraud you. They don't keep their promises. They, they, are, they are there to make money illegally. In that case, good riddance. Let them go <laughs> and report them to credit reference agencies or to the, to, to the lawyers, to the solicitors. Um, but these, the, the, the fourth category represent not more than three to 5% of your, of your customer base. So if you are categorizing currently your customers according to geography or product or services, continue doing so. I have no issue. But for each category, there again, categorize those customers under these four categories so that your limited resources will focus on, for example, the second category, which needs to be reminded. The third category, which needs, which needs you to uh, sort uh, some issues for your customers. And customers would eventually appreciate that you are assisting them, that you are helping them. Yes. And you will become 
people uh, in, in the in the if you're doing a good job in the credit function uh, and you are helping and assisting these customers to sort out these issues they will appreciate you and literally next time around they will pick up the phone and ask for your assistance so you become their contact person within that organization yeah it's extremely it's extremely uh uh, phenomenal for me. I, I love this job. I, I do it with passion. I mean, <laughs> the passion <laughs> is coming through loud and clear. I love it. I love it. Um, I love people. I love meeting people. I love networking. I am, um, and this this profession is is uh, credit management is me anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 great because and it's what it needs because. Before I, I before I got involved with the UK Institute of Credit Management, which was around about 1996, um, I didn't know this this profession existed, and I didn't realise how how um, passionate credit managers were about you know managing this important, desperately important function within a business, and it's um, I'm I'm. I'm glad to say it's alive and well in Malta today. <laughs> um, and um, and that's why anyone watching this interview uh, needs to come to the World Credit Congress because my friends, there will be a whole bunch of equally passionate Josephs and uh, Josephines um, at that conference, uh, you know, talking about credit and um, helping, I think, younger credit professionals or you know newcomers to the industry and indeed users of credit understand why um credit management is such an important function um and i've certainly seen that in my journey um in now, fact claire i have oh. attended uh, almost all uh, credit congresses uh, which were held uh, in the past or over the world um i am one of the organizers as well yes. Um, uh, networking is a, is one of the most important uh, factors, I would say, uh, to meet up with people coming from all over the globe. Um, you can literally feel the positiveness which uh, people transmit to others, especially as you said to to the young to the young credit professionals. Yeah, uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, of course, of course, I I would love to hear. Um, gurus, credit gurus, um, uh, doing their presentation. Yes, of course. But but networking is one of the uh, critical uh, factors when uh, these organize th these these events are being organized around the world. Uh, mm. And if you ever thought, perhaps you're listening to this interview, and you perhaps you thought that credit managers were a, a rather dry old. <laughs> uh, profession uh, I think you need to look at Joseph to understand that actually um, networking with Joseph is going to be some fun so uh, he's a great advert for getting passionate about the business but also building those relationships um, and uh, taking that across the world and he and his steering committee are a great bunch of people so so looking forward to this event in October in Orlando uh, 2024 I'm looking forward to it, Claire. Yeah, you I've are. I've never been to Orlando. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Fantastic. It is a fantastic place. Um, so we're looking forward to getting um, lots of um, people from North America into the Congress and international people as well, because what a great place to, to say you're going on a, con a conference um, and uh, maybe you bring your significant other or maybe, maybe your kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And 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 one more thing, yeah. the fact that I know that Claire is organizing all this uh, conference, I'm sure it will be one of the best co uh, credit congresses ever organized. Oh well, that's <laughs> fantastic. We're I've certainly you, having some fun with it. I've known you for years now, Claire. Yeah, well, I haven't changed. Uh, so, um, well, even I changed. <laughs> no, no, you haven't changed. But so, the best, the best still there <laughs> I know. we want to we want to we want people to come to conference i mean there are lots of conferences all over the world we know that but you know it's possible to come out in business and have some you know have some fun um meet new people 
um, and be with a group of people you feel comfortable with, but also to have some fun and relaxation, right? So that's what this is. Um, this, is this is Congress is going to be about all of that, and and and, and a stunning backdrop. Um, I mean, um, we've talked a lot about the tips that you've got for. Pit. I mean, I love the idea of reorganizing um the accounts receivable department by the type of customer i mean that's a very human way of doing it um i mean do you see outsourcing really replacing in-house credit managers how does an outsourced credit management team be, even begin to do that do you think i don't want to sound like a dinosaur because my children i'm 54 and my children <laughs> they tell me that I'm a di- an old dinosaur now. Mm. Um, uh... I'm be the same. <laughs> I don't feel like an old dinosaur, but yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't have an issue outsourcing the day-to-day running of the credit function. As I told you, the one plus one equals two thing. Yeah, but the human element, and I'm repeating, I know. The human element should always be there. If you outsource that, or if you automate that, you will lose out. You will uh, stop networking with your customers. And what? Uh, uh, let me let me now uh, wear my marketing hat. <laughs> when we, I thought you had that on all the time. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I, I'm I'm a, ch- a chartered marketer as well. Yeah. Um, Claire, one of the most important thing to keep in mind when doing business is to uh, identify your competitive advantage in the market. Mm-hmm. And when we're selling on credit, we may without us knowing. We are using credit as our competitive advantage. And what is this competitive advantage? The human element. The way I give you the service. The way I am delivering the product. Have you ever been to to a bank having two branches, one in square A and one in square B, which is the same bank? But the service that you get from branch A is totally different from the service of the same bank that you get from branch B. Why? Because the people behind their desks were different. Yeah. The way we communicate is different. The way we deal with people is unique. And therefore, if we keep this in mind, when you are selling on credit, use the credit function as your competitive advantage. Mm-hmm. We are competing not only when we are selling, but when we are getting paid. Yeah. Because is probably being chased not only by your company, but by a number of other suppliers. And they are all trying to get paid from that same company, from that same customer. And therefore, you should stay out. By gaining and maintaining good customer relationship. Ah, and there is the nub of it. That is a thinking positive credit building. So you are the person that wants that, that, that you're customer that you know you're you're talking to wants to pay you because they like you correct like you and um can't bottle you have to be their preferred supplier Mm. you have to be your their preferred supplier not only to buy to purchase products and services from you but also when it comes to paying to payment yeah if you are so close with that customer Believe me, they will never miss a payment. And if they do, they will pick up that phone and let you know before you call them. Yeah. 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 No, I I think that's, you know, 
absolutely on the button in terms of why credit managers um, and people handling this function are so important to businesses because they keep those lines of communication open and they develop relationships which which are aligned with your sales team but the sales team will drop out when it gets difficult and your credit manager will carry on the conversation and find out what's going oh, on yeah. <laughs> i've seen that happen yeah so i yeah. i really um I'm, I'm so glad that you've talked in such human terms today about this role because i think it, it you know so many people in the profession across the world can relate to that I mean, what, what are the plans for the MA, MACM, um, you know, over the next two years? What's uh, what, what have you got planned? Yeah, um, uh, one of the uh, plans that we are trying to uh, start, um, we are in the process of getting the license from the Central Bank of Malta, actually, is to start providing credit scoring reports for both uh, companies and also uh, individuals here in Malta. So that is one of our uh, plans. We have been working on this with our business partners overseas uh, for the past uh, three years now. And we are at a point where uh, we are literally waiting for the central bank license uh, to be issued so that we will can, we can start um, uh, selling these reports to our to our uh, members, to, to the business community. Uh, apart from that, another thing which uh, I would like to see in Malta is um, uh, MACM providing more seminars, more lectures, uh, more conferences. Um, uh, in my opinion, education is, is extremely important. I am an, ac an academic myself. Um, I have to find more time to sit down and write books uh, for the business community. Yeah. Um, so that is uh, plan number two. And uh, plan number three is continuous improving our uh, systems, uh, the data that we provide uh, to make it more uh, real time and uh, to get more sources from where we get these uh, the, the, this data and information. Uh, I strongly believe that information in today's world is extremely important. You cannot go anywhere, you cannot improve if you don't have information. And I think information is key uh, for every business. And uh, I will strive literally um, uh, to provide a um, um, system for our members, which is already very good. It's, uh, it's, it's excellent. If you, if you had to speak with one of our members, they will tell you that our system is excellent and very cost effective. But there again, uh, I'm never satisfied with what I do. I will always seek to continue improving what we have been doing for the past uh, 22 years, Claire. Good for you. Good for you. That's entirely as it should be, continually improving um, and searching for more and more solutions for our communities. And you obviously have a very active community out there in Malta. Well, Joseph, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, catching up with you today and hearing your very um, sound advice, uh, very practical advice, very human advice. Um, on credit management. Um, as I say, you can't bottle and sell what Joseph is talking about. You've got to have it in you and you've got to not be shy. You've got to, you've got to embrace it. E embrace the, the humanness of asking people for money um, and you'd be surprised the results. And he's a great advert for why it works. So thank you so much, my friend, for, for being no, I thank you. I thank you. I should thank you very much for this invitation. The pleasure was all mine. Um, uh, thank you, Claire, and your team. And I look, I, I'm really looking forward uh, to meeting you next year and uh, to meeting, obviously, uh, all the delegates at the Congress. I'm sure it will be a great event. Um, uh, let's meet up. Yeah. Uh, networking is important. I, I, I am always looking forward to network.
Well, come back and talk to us on the sofa again when you've got some uh, more ideas about what you want to talk about in Orlando, because um, we really want to build up the profile of the steering, this, aus this auspicious steering committee that have been working on this Congress around the world over the last few years and have built up a tremendous um, community themselves um, of people across the world talking about credit. Um, so come back and see us and we'll, we'll do another interview. Um, <clears throat> don't forget, if you want to visit uh, um, Joseph's uh, website, um, I'll put all the information for him and his LinkedIn profile um, in the show notes. For everyone that's watching the interview, Share Group is delighted to be involved in the World Credit Congress um, and flattered, to be honest, to, to get involved with so many good people. Um, um, and our website is uh, sharegroup.com. It's our platform for all our solutions, all our cash flow solutions, the enforcement solutions, which put us in the credit community. And uh, we, um, we, you know, we, we enjoy seeing people from across the world, talking to people across the world. So if you want to be on the sofa and be interviewed um, about your business and what you bring to the party, um, I'm all ears. I love talking to business people and finding out what makes them tick. Um, and if it's credit related, well, that's right in my sweet spot as well. So thank you very much. And Joseph, I look forward to seeing you next year, if not before. Thank you so much. Probably before. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you.